Welcome, everybody, to the Scientix2 webinar series. I'm Viola Pinci, and I'm a member of the Scientix team at European Schoolnet, and I'm moderating this session today. With me, uh, my colleague Adina Nistor, we will provide technical support to the chat. You can see her in the chat with the Scientix account. Our presenter for this session is Old Vice, a Scientix Deputy Ambassador for Hungary, and we will talk about programming in physics classes. The presentation will last about 40 minutes, and after that, we will dedicate about 20 minutes for questions and suggestions and answers. In case you encounter any technical problem during the presentation, uh, please write to Adina with the Scientix account in the chat, and she will support you through it. You can also use the chat, if you like, during the presentation to share comments and suggestions with the other participants or to post some questions for the final session. To share with everybody, please select the option everyone in the menu. And now uh, I will leave the floor to Zolt. Welcome and thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for presenting me. Welcome, everybody. I'm Zolt Vica from Hungary and uh, we are uh, going to talk about coding in physics. Uh, first of all, I would like to commit uh, I am not uh, an ICT teacher, I am a physics teacher, and uh, you will see we will uh, concentrate on, on teaching physics, not ICT. Uh, I would like to um, strengthen uh, everybody who would like to share any uh, thoughts uh, you, um, through the chat. Uh, every message is welcomed, and I am uh, try to uh, answer the, any question during the webinar or at the end of the webinar. Um, now we see a different uh, page. I, I take back uh, the presenter uh, position and. Uh, Last minute, we are okay. solving it. Thank you. And okay. apologies for the interruption. Okay, no problem. So let's start. Uh, okay, so uh, let's start with the presentation. We will uh, examine um, some uh, real programs, but uh, first of all, I would like to uh, speak about my project. In this autumn, I started. Uh, a, a teaching project uh, with my students. First of all, my aims. Uh, I would like to teach uh, physics, not uh, ICT. I am, I am not an ICT teacher. I want my students to uh, know physics very well. Uh, so this is the first aim. Then the second one is uh, to develop the algorithmical thinking. After that, IT literacy and uh, you, uh, to these models, uh, I would make uh, would like to make my students to make virtual experiences or inquiries, and uh, it is a good uh, opportunity to investigate real world problems. But the main thing is that uh, it's not a programming class; it's a physics class. So, uh, my group, uh, I uh, do this project. Uh, with five students, three girls and three boys. They are interested in physics. They choose this subject, but uh, they are not uh, especially talented. They are regular uh, students who like physics, but uh, they are not uh, award winning or, or champions in physics or, or not even in, uh, in ice cream. So they are regular uh, uh, kids who are. Uh, in their 11th grade, so they are between 16 and 17. Okay, uh, the next thing is uh, the tool, the environment. Uh, as I am not a programmer expert, uh, I uh, wanted to choose uh, an easy tool, which, okay, we, have some background noise. Sorry for apologies for the interruption. Yeah, you were experiencing uh, some technical drawbacks. It will be sold in a 
minute. I remind all the participants to please turn off your microphone and webcams during the presentation. Thank you very much, everyone. I think we can continue. Uh, I choose uh, Microsoft Excel and uh, its macro feature, it is, which is basically uh, some kind of visual basic uh, programming environment. Uh, I use this because it has uh, uh, easy syntax, easy visualization, and, and it's very easy to start the programming. And, and, the, and another thing uh, which is important for us in uh, with Excel macro, we can write uh, a macro or a program for uh, cal for the calculation. We can uh, gather the, all the data by this program. We can print it out in a sheet. And uh, to examine examining the data is is uh, separated from the program. And uh, it in this way it's easier to write the program. I would like to mention uh, JavaScript as a as an alternative tool. Um, it's maybe better because uh, it has a wide range of uh, of usage uh, these days. It's a real scripting language and it may be suitable in a one-on-one -on -one environment because um, JavaScript uh, programs can be implemented in browsers, so you can uh, make uh, uh, JavaScript programs and run the JavaScript on, on the tablet, maybe. Uh, we don't have such uh, tools, so it was uh, not a, an option for us. In uh, Excel Macro, the syntax is very easy, uh, I think. It was very easy to start. Still, it was hard uh, for the first time for the students who have uh, never dealt with such uh, programs. Uh, so I think it was a, a good choice because even this easy way is, uh, was hard sometimes. And we use uh, variables and uh, for state variables, the XI uses the dim uh, order. And we use uh, integers and, and doubles, doubles uh, for the numbers uh, which uh, uh, has fractions. We can uh, make uh, or add values for these uh, variables, simply write uh, equal cells uh, to numbers which first is uh, the row, the second is the column. And if I would like to write out uh, somewhere uh, a variable, I use fields equal to and variable names. So this line, uh, so, so the second line is for give a value, the third uh, is write out a value. We use uh, loops or, or cycles. Uh, there are two kind of um, cycles we could use. If um, there is a point where we want to get uh, with the, with our model or with our program, with uh, our program, we can use do while. Um, we have, and uh, there is a, um, a, a statement here. It will running until this statement uh, will be true, and uh, the loop uh, says this is the end of uh, the cycle. If there is no such thing. Uh, which will be, will be the end of uh, the, the program, we can use uh, the four next uh, uh, loops where there is a counter here in, uh, for the four, and when the counter uh, exceeds its limits, uh, the cycle is over. I will show you uh, some, uh, some use of, of this syntax. Let me uh, show you uh, which is the flow of this, uh, our method. 
First of all, we design the model, so we choose a problem. We talk about uh, which parameters uh, are important, which are not, uh, what to consider in the model, what to not. How, how do you implement or write uh, the model itself? After writing it, uh, we should validate this model in a well-known situation. It means use uh, for a situation which is already known. So you can check if your uh, program is good or, or not. After that, you should extend the model. So use your program, program uh, for an unknown situation. And, uh, this way you can go further in, in inquiry. Uh, in this uh, extension, you can make a virtual uh, experience or virtual inquiry uh, with your model. I will show you an example of it. And the last uh, phase is back to physics or back to the class. If it's possible, it would be very good to test the result in a real life uh, situation for the extended model. And let, uh, let me show you what uh, situation we investigated. We made programs for free fall. Um, and uh, now uh, let's see uh, the programs. I will uh, show, show you my uh, desktop. I share my screen. And uh, now you should uh, see uh, an Excel sheet, and here on the right side, you can see the macros. Uh, sub freefold here starts the first macro called freefold. Uh, at the beginning, we clear all the data if there is maybe any. Then uh, here are uh, the statement about the variables we will use. We make the initial values for this. Uh, v is for velocity, S is uh, for the, for the uh, meters uh, what this uh, body uh, made. Um, A is for acceleration, H is for height, where we drop our uh, point of mass. In this model, we consider an object uh, as a point of mass. So there is no uh, any kind of uh, friction or drag. Uh, the height, the initial acceleration is um, given by the user. So we ask uh, the data uh, from the sheet. And the time step um, is uh, the um, Resolution of the time, I, I will show what does it mean. Uh, after initial values, there is a cycle. Uh, do while s is uh, less than age. So this uh, cycle between do while and loop will be done again and again and again until uh, the s is uh, lower than age. So, uh, N is for uh, counting uh, the situation. And we calculate the movement. We consider that uh, in one step, uh, the velocity is grown uh, with um, the acceleration uh, multiplied with this E, where, which uh, means uh, the time steps. So we, ca we think that this body uh, will accelerate with A, for the time e. Then we uh, assume that uh, it will go further, uh, so this uh, will be bigger with uh, the v velocity multiplied with this e time. Okay, then time, which is t, is got bigger with e. Then we can write out our data. Uh, the t, s, and the v. Then it starts again. From loop, it's jump back to to this point. Uh, N is uh, good for numbered cells where we write out the data. So it will be written out in the next uh, line. 
Okay, let's see how it works. Uh, in this first uh, situation, the height is 10 meters, and this time step, the resolution of time is one second. Uh, you will see uh, in this uh, height, it's, uh, it's a very, very big resolution. We can see only two uh, rows, two data. It means um, uh, our uh, body falls down within two seconds. And our model showed that it uh, reached uh, 30 meters, which is absolutely wrong. And its speed is uh, reached uh, 20 meters per second. So we should um, lower this time step. It is a good point to show uh, to the students that uh, this kind of uh, program is uh, it's not a perfect solution and its accuracy is depends on our time step. If we, uh, if we uh, low, lower the time step, then the calculation will increase. Let's see uh, with one, uh, one of the tens uh, time step. And now we can uh, see what uh, we were um, looking for. We can see the speed is increasing uh, in a linear uh, function and the distance is increasing in a square function. Uh, as we uh, were just waiting for. So in this uh, moment, we can uh, validate our uh, program. So we can check it is work properly. We can uh, calculate these uh, data, uh, the polling time from uh, uh, the expectations that are given. And we can uh, calculate that uh, the accuracy of this uh, program is exactly at, at the digit where uh, the time steps is. So if I use a smaller uh, time step, the accuracy will be bigger. Uh, this is the same because uh, the data is already from here. And uh, we can see the exact time here, so uh, it has uh, one digit more in accuracy. Let's see uh, how can we uh, involve uh, the drag of the air. This is our second uh, model. I will show you uh, the program. It's quite similar, but uh, some other uh, values are integrated. We use not only uh, height or acceleration uh, and time temp, uh, we have seen that this body is a sphere. So here is its radius. Uh, it has a mass in kilograms and uh, the air density can be uh, given by the user. So uh, we declare the initial values here in, in these rows. Uh, some of them uh, are given by the user here, the, uh, the height, the acceleration, the time step, the radius of the sphere, the mass, and uh, the density of the air. Uh, and the initial uh, acceleration is, uh, is the E, and we use for, for um, G, for the um, acceleration uh, during the fall. We declare a uh, k uh, constant, uh, which is depends on uh, the size of the sphere. Here is uh, the radius, and uh, it depends on the density of the air. And uh, there is a, a one, uh, a uh, half uh, multiplying factor because uh, this is the um, uh, the shape uh, constant for uh, the spheres. Then uh, almost every, everything else is the same, almost exact. Uh, exact. For acceleration, um, we have a calculation in every cycle. Here uh, you can see uh, that. Uh, we 
uh, decrease the acceleration by a factor which depends on the square of the velocity. I used here uh, the absolute value of V uh, multiplied B instead of uh, the square of B. And there is a, a good reason for to do that. In this uh, case, uh, the, the drag is always uh, against uh, the, the movement, but not, uh, not in every case. Um, and uh, with this uh, method, so using absolute V uh, multiplied with V, uh, we can uh, hold um, the signal of the V. Uh, and the uh, square of the V is always positive, and it cannot be a, a negative value. Uh, okay, uh, we have some uh, somewhere else. Okay, everything is okay, and we can. Okay, so um, let's go further. So here uh, there is a, a decreasing of, uh, of the acceleration, and we use as v multiplied with v uh, to hold uh, the signal of the velocity. Everything else is the same. We assume that uh, the velocity is increasing uh, a multiplied with e. The distance is uh, increasing with the velocity multiplying e, and so on. Then uh, we give back data here uh, in, in new rows. Uh, I uh, made the acceleration write out in the last uh, column. Let's see what we get here. Run uh, the program. Uh, the height is uh, 10 meters for the first time. And let's see, here we can see that uh, the time step is uh, not enough to get a perfect solution, but we can see now the decreasing of acceleration, which uh, shows that something new happened here. Let me show you with uh, a smaller time step. Now we can see uh, that the, the speed is uh, uh, not um, increasing linearly, but uh, the increasing is smaller and smaller as the acceleration is smaller and smaller. Okay, let me see, uh, let me show you a, a bigger height. Okay, something uh, happened to us. Uh, I take back. Just a moment, we are solving the technical problem. Apologies again for the interruption. Okay, I am the presenter again, I, I will show you. Uh, you can share again your screen. So thank you very much. Okay. So now uh, everyone can see our desktop again. See, si, we can. Okay. So um, let me see you uh, a bigger height at uh, 20 meters. And uh, if you're on our program, we can see that uh, the acceleration is uh, become smaller and smaller as um, the velocity is bigger and bigger. We can see that in, in the distance, it's square. Uh, it, it starts with, with square-like uh, curve, but it becomes closer and closer to a linear case, which uh, will be exactly linear when the speed is constant. Um, and I would like to show you here um, some misbusting. Uh, there is a, a story about Galilei almost in every textbook. Um, let's see uh, how it, it would happen if um, we would uh, throw some balls from the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. I searched this to that end. Uh, the Wikipedia said it's um, 36 meters high, so let's make this high uh, our, our program. And um, for the beginning, let's start with uh, this radius and this mass. Okay, let me see what happens. Uh, our 
model says uh, it will be uh, at the bottom at um, 4.2 seconds. I check if our old data is here, so it is the final answer. It will fall uh, in 4.2 seconds. And uh, according to this uh, story, uh, Galilei used the different uh, weight um, balls with the same size, so radius should be the same, and the mass should be something else. I double this uh, mass, so let me see with six kilograms. And uh, in this case, you can see last uh, value we reach is uh, 3.8 seconds. So it's almost a half a second difference between the two ball. Uh, it's clearly visible uh, by human eye. So if uh, Gully should would drop down these two balls, they wouldn't fall at the same time uh, on the ground. And in, in this point, I, I would like to emphasize that uh, the free fall uh, is not as easy as we assume usually in a physics class. There, there is a, a, a very uh, hard physics behind it, and uh, students see it in, in everyday life. Um, so uh, we, we should talk about uh, the drag in in the free fall because everyone sees it. And if we wouldn't include this in our curriculum, uh, they definitely wouldn't understand what, what I am talking about because they cannot see any free fall without um, uh, drag in, in his or her life. Maybe I can show him uh, some videos about vacuum chambers but in the real, real life, uh, see or he will never match this situation. Okay, um, let's go further. Uh, I will uh, show you a small problem. In almost every textbook, there is uh, some exercises about uh, uh, a boat rowing across a river. In many cases, this river um, has a constant speed distribution uh, along his width. Uh, but um, there is no such river in real life. So I asked the students uh, how it uh, would be happen if uh, the river has a speed distribution, which means uh, uh, on the side, the speed is uh, slower and in the in the middle the speed is high and the distribution is, is a square uh, function uh, it, it's not a, a big deal this uh, program but it was very good for us uh, to, uh, to to make uh, some exercise for the students uh, so I show your uh, show you my macro here and it is um, uh, very good to uh, learn about how to um, watch um, your coordinates. I search for the cross uh, programs. They are, I cannot see here. Maybe no, it's not. Um, Okay, it's not included here. Um, okay, I, I think I will skip this because I cannot see uh, the macro here. Uh, maybe it, it's, uh, it's a different sheet. Uh, I can see show you the result here. And in this point, uh, I would like to share with you uh, some luck of, uh, of the Excel. Um, in this uh, case, the maximum speed of the water is one meter per second, and you can see here the shape. Uh, it's, uh, the rowing is, uh, is uh, always uh, towards uh, for the other side. 
So uh, let's see what if I change the, the maximum speed water for two. And in this case, uh, we can see something else. Okay, uh, but unfortunately, okay, um, the scale here is not the not the same as the first time. It's, it's always automatically uh, given by uh, the exam. Okay, uh, I, I can see. Uh, you send me a message. Okay. Um, okay. In this case, um, I, I saw you use the Adobe Flash Programmer. Uh, I would like to emphasize uh, that in this case, uh, in this particular case, uh, the program were uh, written by the students. So uh, it's across. Uh, uh, um, program is was uh, written by uh, the students. Uh, I showed them some uh, examples in three, three, four, and three, four, two. Uh, but after that, uh, they had to write these models. I will show, uh, will show you some examples later about the students' works. Um, now I, I would like to uh, share that um, uh, I use uh, Joe Gabra to. Uh, to use these uh, data in um, in a good uh, uh, resolution because uh, Excel um, made auto uh, for for the access and in uh, GeoGebra you can uh, make uh, fix it so. I show you here a, a quick example about uh, I get my x and epsilon uh, coordinates. I can uh, paste it here and I can uh, make uh, a list of points of, from them. And uh, here I can show you the a proper uh, way of, uh, of showing the, the result. So this is uh, the actual uh, um, road of of the boat here. And if we make the calculation with a different speed, then uh, if we make uh, a new run, you can see here is this um, distance distance and the other axis this distance stands. So it is not a, a good way to show the results, but, uh, but in uh, GeoGebra you can make uh, fix it by uh, uh, the same uh, size of the measurement of on the axis. So, um, sorry, uh, the list of points, and you can see now the second uh, situation when the max speed of the water is, was three. So uh, Excel is not the best opportunity, uh, but it, uh, it is a good opportunity to make the students write these, uh, these programs. I used, uh, I choose the Excel macro because uh, these uh, these macros are not too difficult uh, for the students. The the next thing uh, we was uh, investigating is the harmonic uh, oscillation. Um, uh, Mihai asked uh, asked me, uh, can I force the chart uh, axis to be the same in the macro? I was searching for this, uh, and I only think I found that uh, I can. Um, uh, I can can force it uh, for every case. I can make uh, fix it uh, in every situation. So if I made uh, uh, made one calculation, I I can uh, make uh, 
to, to resize the axis, but if I make a, a new calculation, I have to do it again. So I didn't find a good way to solve it. I am, I am not an, an expert on this uh, situation, so maybe there is a solution for that. Okay, the next thing we uh, investigated together with students was harmonic oscillation. Uh, we assumed that there is a point of uh, mass on the, on the string. Uh, we pull that string and then let it uh, move. Okay, I show you our macro here. Um, it is uh, under here, it is uh, harmonic. Uh, we get uh, some data, M is for mass, uh, D is for the spring constant, uh, how strong is this uh, uh, spring, uh, X is uh, for, I think, uh, where we uh, pull, uh, pull out or push uh, up our uh, body, E is for this time, time step, and in this case, there is no a particular uh, uh, end where we, we finish uh, our, uh, our model. So I said there should be, uh, okay, I should be again the presenter, okay. Uh, Just a moment, Adina is, Solving the technical problem. Apologies again for interruptions. Of okay, no, no problem. I think I can share my screen again. Yeah, we can see your screen again. Thank you. Okay, so in this case, there is no no particular end position or or, or anything that could be the end of the movement. So there is a, a time max value where the the program will stop. Okay, so here are the initial values, uh, and then we do our cycle while uh, the time is uh, less than time, time max, and um, uh, here are our uh, expectation about acceleration. We can uh, derive this from the second law of, of Newton. Uh, uh, D multiplied by X is, is uh, the spring force. We divide it by the mass of the object, and everything else is the same. Uh, we start with uh, writing out uh, values, so the first value will be uh, written out uh, at, at the beginning. Uh, I would like to um, tell everyone to, to watch there is nothing um, uh, built in about the sinus or cosinus or anything else. So it's only uh, the second law of Newton, nothing else. And let, let me show what happens if we make this calculation with uh, the 0 0.5 uh, seconds time step. We can uh, see that it is looks like something we we, we was waiting for, but it's not not uh, perfect. Um, we, if we slow down uh, or we we make a, a slow um, a small smaller time step, our model will be will be better. As we can see, uh, here are the functions we was we are waiting for. We can see. This is the x uh, uh, in the function of time. We can see that uh, since, or, or it depends on the time uh, axis, uh, so, so the um, trigonometrical function that we were waiting for. And uh, beyond that, uh, from these data, we can uh, calculate uh, the period time by the ter theorem, which is 1.98 uh, in this case. And we can uh, uh, see it here, how many is it in this uh, model, and it is, um, uh, uh, I think it, uh, it will be the uh, x axis, so it is two, uh, two seconds. Um, 
in this uh, case, it will be more accurate if we use smaller time steps. Uh, but it also uh, show us um, that our model is is, is good or, or usable at least because in in the program there is nothing built in to uh, to to um, to support this this time. So it means that. Um, uh, this uh, second law of Newton is truly gives back this uh, this period time in in this case. It is good for for uh, practice uh, and uh, and make models, but um, the most uh, interesting part is when we use it uh, with drag. So let's step uh, further. There is uh, the damped harmonic oscillation and. Um, as like uh, in free fall, uh, we integrated uh, in our uh, program uh, beyond this uh, 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 harmonic uh, movement. Beyond this, there is the almost the same uh, decreasing value um, in. Uh, uh, this uh, in this uh, situation for the drag. Okay, um, I see there is a chat. Uh, 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 okay, uh, I never checked the, for a really, really, really long time. Uh, maybe uh, the numerical error will be bigger and bigger uh, in in big times. I didn't check this yet. Uh, and now I would like to mention at, at the end, uh, I will show you uh, a link where you, you can download all, all these files if you would like them. So uh, let's see it in this uh, damped uh, harmonic oscillation. Uh, and uh, here we can see almost nothing uh, in this case because the drag is very, very small. Uh, so I will increase the radius a bigger value, and let's see here, we can see uh, this uh, decreasing amplitude. And if I uh, make density much, much bigger, uh, then we can see uh, that this increasing is not linear as, uh, as we were waiting for. Uh, and in this point, I, I would like to uh, show uh, an extra macro uh, made by my student. It was uh, an exam uh, situation for for them, and um, uh, it was uh, his uh, task to to make uh, a damped oscillation uh, extra macro. And uh, here are the data, um, and after that, uh, uh, there was a second task to collect the maximum amplitudes uh, and uh, investigate the maximum amplitudes. We can see see this here, the data, the maximum amplitudes. Uh, here, there are uh, the measurements, the maximum amplitudes, and they try to find uh, some function to to write it down. Uh, he find the most suitable this uh, equation for uh, the data, um, and we investigated uh, how is it correct or why not or why yes, and and uh, which constant or which parameters are. Um, describe or modify these, uh, these values, these numbers. So this, is, this was an exam for him, and uh, it, it was a successful exam for him. So he, he did it his, uh, as it, uh, his own work uh, from, uh, from the given uh, data. Okay. Um, I see the time is uh, running, and there is one more very interesting uh, situation which I, I would like to share with you. This is the resonation, where uh, here is a small um, um, picture about this situation. There is a spring, uh, 
and here mass uh, and it is damped uh, with friction and drag and we use um, an engine to uh, to drag it uh, from from the app up and down up and down um, uh, in uh, in a different, maybe in a different uh, speed than it's his own, and we made a um, model for it. Um, Cyprusing, it's very easy to uh, to modify the previous one. The only thing we need for this is I am searching. Sorry, I I go back to to macros. Okay, uh, it is uh, resonation. Uh, uh, I don't want to uh, run it. I would like to show. Um, so the only thing we should um, include that uh, make um, uh, a calculation about uh, sorry about uh, a new uh, value. This is. Uh, this line uh, F is uh, for the frequency of of the engine. Uh, so of of which frequency uh, we we use the engine? Uh, this way you describe uh, how big uh, this this drag uh, from from the engine. And uh, the only thing uh, we have to do is include this value here because the the distance of of uh, the spring will be different, and everything else is the same. So with this two small modification, we can investigate the resonation. Let me show you uh, show you the the results. Okay, uh, here uh, we have uh, two velocity, um, angular velocity. Uh, this is um, the velocity, angular velocity of the engine. Um, I calculate from from the given uh, data the angular velocity of of the own the spring, the own harmonic oscillation, and. Um, and uh, now it, we can see the uh, the engine uh, velocity, angular velocity is smaller uh, with, uh, than the own. And now we can see this situation uh, for for the, the B body. But if um, we change it, and uh, I would like to show you that the maximum amplitude is, is 1.5. If I make uh, the angular velocity of the engine similar to uh, the own angular velocity, in this case we can see the resonance, as we can see the maximum amplitude is grow up to 10. So this is this is what we call uh, resonance, and uh, it is interesting to make uh, experiments with this. Um, in this case, when the density and the drag is quite low, um, uh, this uh, resonant uh, velocity is close to to own velocity. But if we change the density, then uh, it will change. So we can make um, a new experiment, and uh, we can see it. It looks bigger, but it's really smaller because it's it's only a, just five uh, or, or so. This maximum amplitude, then it was almost ten, uh, the previous one. So uh, the and, and if I small smaller make smaller angular velocity for for the outer force, uh, maybe I can uh, find a bigger, but not not not, not now. I would like to show uh, my students' work. Um, this uh, uh, virtual inquiry was done by a student who chose uh, chose uh, air, uh, uh, kind of water, or or uh, less, uh, more or less dense uh, than than uh, air, and. He made uh, experiences, virtual experiences with this model. Uh, he here 
Mm. In this uh, axis, um, he used uh, for the angular velocity of the engine, and uh, here the max amplitude of the given situation. And we can see that uh, the all four or three uh, uh, sheets in one piece here. So we can see that if uh, there is a, a really small uh, drag, then here uh, the biggest resonance we get and the resonance frequency is maybe 32, 33. When there is uh, a bigger drag or bigger friction, our amplitude is lower, but uh, the maximum is also uh, a, a different value. And if we use uh, something like water that is more, more, more smaller than the others, you can see the axis here, uh, and the maximum uh, resonant frequency is really different than in the other cases. So uh, this uh, virtual inquiry was done by a student, and uh, this is the real value of, of using uh, these models, and, and that's why I uh, choose Exa Macro to make capable the, the students work with. There are many, many tools which are much more uh, uh, beautiful than this, but they are uh, usually harder than this, and there is um, a small um, chance to, to make students do it. It's not impossible, but uh, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, I, um, um, I don't want to make uh, an ICT class. So there is a question, uh, can I imagine working this method in, in 20 and 30 students? Uh, yes, I can, can imagine this uh, uh, method. Uh, I think for, for that uh, amount of students, it would be uh, uh, good if, if I could work with them, for example, in, with computers or laptops or something. Uh, I don't have such tools. So um, I don't think it, it would be uh, good to, to stand in, in the front and speaking for, for, for the students uh, about programming. Uh, but if I could uh, uh, give them some tool to work with, so on a computer or something like that, uh, I think it, it is uh, possible to do that. Maybe it, it would be... Uh, Small, uh, slower method, so maybe we should uh, uh, investigate uh, more uh, simple situation, uh, but, uh, but I think definitely it is possible to do that. So uh, it is uh, 52 uh, on my uh, clock, so we are uh, heading toward the end. I would like to share uh, some uh, closing thoughts. Um, so we investigated this uh, situation. We don't have time for Celestia Buddy, but if you download uh, the webinar uh, Excel file, you can see it for yourself. There are uh, very, very uh, much uh, further opportunities. I would like to mention uh, the decay law uh, because uh, it is very interesting, I think, to use uh, the random numbers and, and show that uh, if we make a, a random rule for every uh, single atom or nuclei, uh, there is uh, a rule which will describe all of, of the, the habits of the all uh, mass. Not, not the simple, uh, the lonely uh, atoms itself, but for the whole uh, mass, we can uh, write uh, a law uh, for the behavior. So uh, I would like to thank for your attention. Um, here is uh, a link uh, for a folder. You can uh, download um, from here, uh, some Excel sheets with these macros and uh, this presentation, if you'd like to. And I put there um, an article uh, a friend of mine 
uh, from Hungary uh, who deals with uh, uh, similar methods and similar uh, programs uh, uh, for uh, for students. Uh, I tried to to copy that uh, to chat in a. Uh, I, I think I can do it uh, in a minute. I open Hi, Salt. The... Uh, we will uh, share your link uh, in a follow-up email. We will be sending in the coming days, and also the suggestion of the other links uh, uh, from the chat. Okay, I get now, so I can send it in the chat for everyone. Uh, so here is uh, the link. You can click on it, and you can see uh, the folder. Maybe I, I check it. And, uh, I think uh, it, it is working for me, so I hope for everyone. And uh, okay, I see uh, uh, the answers. Okay, if there are any question, maybe about uh, this method or or the programs. If you have any question, please post. Um, in the chat, we have still uh, some few minutes for, for more questions or comments and uh, Zolt answer. In the meantime, I would like to thank you, Zolt, for this very interesting webinar. We had many comments and suggestions from the chat as well. It was interesting to know how many of the attendees also include similar techniques in the classes. There were some comments, for example, about the use of uh, simulation in general, and also a link shared about a uh, video where the simulation were transformed in animation to share with others. And this suggestion and comments from the other participants, as I said, we will share uh, in the follow-up emails. Okay, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank and you. <laughs> I am um, welcome every uh, message uh, and every uh, suggestion or a question about this this program. There is another question in the chat from Marina. And she yeah. says, "Can we use this as an assignment we can give to students? So you think this is difficult for them?" Um, uh, I can uh, tell that um, we investigated uh, together uh, the free fall and uh, free fall with drag. Uh, we made, uh, we, we talked about how to make uh, uh, a program for harmonic oscillation. We didn't do that, but we talked about how, how, to, how it uh, would uh, look like. And after that, there was a, a test, uh, an assignment, where they have to write a program for damped oscillation. So they uh, should put together oscillation and and drag and make um, make the whole program uh, about it and uh, they was capable of it so i i think uh, for the right preparation uh, we can give such assignments uh, for the students uh, even as a homework but in that case uh, Maybe they, uh, some one other uh, relatives or, or brother will do that. So uh, we made the test in the school, so they have uh, no uh, chance to cheat. Uh, Thank yeah, you very much. Michael said the same. Uh, three, they they did three uh, in the class, and the students did the four on their own. So my uh, experiences are the same. Thank you very much uh, for you much. your answers. We can have some more questions if you want. Okay. If you'd like to share with us some final remarks or suggestions for the participant on how to start with this kind of activities or how to help the students with that. Okay. Someone is asking if you have a tutorial with this application, that would be mm -hmm. very helpful as well. Okay, um, maybe I, uh, I can do that. 
um, I, I don't have the promise yet, uh, but if I have uh, time, I, I will uh, make some kind of tutorial, maybe uh, a screencast or something like that, and I will uh, post it at, um, at that folder uh, which I shared with, with you. And we will be happy to share as well in the email and through the Scientix channel as well for for everyone. Uh, well, I think we can we are wrapping up the session for today. Uh, I would like to thank you all for participating on behalf of European School Network, Scientix, me and my colleague Adina here with me that helped us with the Scientix account for technical um, support. Um, I hope to see you online again in one of the coming webinars on the Scientix series. And the next talk will be on the 24th of November and will be about open source hardware. Thank you very much, Zolt, for this very interesting talk. And all the information on the webinars are available on the Scientix portal in the Scientix Live section. Thank you again and till next time. Okay, see you, everyone. Thank you for your watching and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Goodbye. Goodbye.